our purpose is going to see if we can determine what is justice and whether we should be just and what that has to do with our individual lives. So thanks for taking the time to uh, share your views with us and your reasoning. I'm happy to do it. Uh, what I think we should do is start with the general question, which is, what is justice? A uh, short definition of it. Well, I, I think we've defined it pretty well in our Constitution, and that is that all men are created equal, and they're entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two possible interpretations of what equality means. Some people say that equality means to be treated equal no matter what you do, and the other ones say that's equality of condition. And the other ones say that equality is to uh, have equal opportunity. In other words, equal under the law. Uh, which of the two views are you expressing when not, you use the word equality? I'm not sure they're totally separable, but I'm referring more. I think our Constitution speaks more to the equality of opportunity and the that's opportunity what, to have life and liberty and to pursue happiness. Uh -huh. Well, I would agree that that is an ingredient of justice, which is uh, what would be then to be just, a just person? Well, to be a just person would be to treat people with that sense of equality and to understand that uh, there should not be any unnecessary impediments in their way of seeking, of maintaining their life, having their liberty, or pursuing happiness. Uh, making sure, in, in other words, that their rights are respected right. and in that sense uh, treating them as they deserve because as human beings, a human being should have certain rights and in our society we respect those rights and we've implemented them in the Constitution and the laws that follow. I would agree. But I'm looking for an even broader concept. Let me throw out an idea and see, okay. have you react to it and see what you think. I would say that the essence of being just is to treat people as they deserve. In other words, to look at the facts, apply to the facts a valid moral principle, which is what we were talking about before, and then distinguish, treat people accordingly, those based on that evaluation. In other words, it means that you're going to differentiate between people when you judge you say, well, this person behaved well because this is what he did and this is a, a rule we have that determines what's good and what's bad and it's a valid rule, so he gets treated this way and this other person did not behave well either because uh, whatever he did was violated X valid rule and he'll be treated in a different way. So I would say that essential to justice is differentiation. Would you agree? Yes. So then... Uh, there's basically three factors that we would have to uh, have included in the process of being just. The factor of identifying the facts would be one necessary thing. So, for example, if a person was not interested in knowing the facts, we could already know he's not going to be a just person. Would I you think agree? I would agree with that. Let's see if we can use an example to sort of concretize this. Say, say a uh, in the case of a professor, a high school professor, who gave an examination on law. And he, he gave the examination and he didn't correct the exams. He didn't even look at the exams. Obviously, he wouldn't be a just professor when he went to give out the grades. I would agree with that. So this would be a good, a good way to see that if you're not interested in knowing the facts, you can't be just. It's the only way you can measure the conduct and determine whether the conduct is, in right. fact, appropriate. So then our second factor which we uh, uh, said was important was to apply a valid rule. And we could see like if this professor applied uh, the kind of knowledge that's required from a, for a law student to high school students, that wouldn't be fair. He would not be applying a valid uh, I, would, I would agree with that. A valid uh, norm. So that would also be uh, a factor that has to be complied with in order for you to be just. And suppose he did the right thing. He looked, he read the, the test, and he applied the criteria applicable to high school students. And at the end, he said, well, I don't want anybody to feel bad. I'll just grade everybody equally. What well, do you mean, give them the same grade? Just give them the same grade. I don't, I don't think that would be just. So that would violate the last factor, which is the differentiation. 
Correct. So if we include all three factors, then you would agree that we have been differentiating, that we have been uh, judging based on the facts and applying valid moral principles, and we would be doing justice. Right. The only place where there, I agree with that. Uh -huh. The only place where there is a conflict, and it's a conflict among societies, it's a conflict within societies, and between and among societies, and that is, what are the valid moral principles? Um, and, uh, and one society, one culture, would view a valid moral principle in some cases as not being valid in another society. Take one to stick with concrete examples like you suggested. In some societies, the notion of having more than uh, one spouse um, is a valid moral, um, uh, a, 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 a valid moral action. Uh, in our society, uh, we have laws against bigamy. Um, and we conclude that that's not valid. Um, so that uh, there are cultural and societal differences that, uh, that distinguish, to use your phrase, uh, between and among the various sets of uh, laws and, uh, and, 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 and the order of procedure society chooses to be guided to guide the conduct of their citizens by. Mm. Well, I would agree with you that different societies have different norms, uh, but I would disagree with regards to whether it's totally subjective. In other words, if a society... I didn't say that. No, I just said okay, they're different. They're different. Okay. Well, you would agree that the fact that a X society has a particular rule doesn't mean it's morally correct. Would you agree with that? By my standard, that's correct. Yes, but uh, uh, is your... Is it only a question of your subjective judgment, or do you think that there is an objective reality with regards to what's good and what's bad? I think there's an objective reality, but I must acknowledge that there are equally moral, rational, decent people who may draw a different conclusion. I must live by what I believe to be the moral, rational principles. Rational principles that have been arrived at as a consequence the application of sound principles of reasoning. There are other societies that do not, do not subscribe to that notion. Well, I would agree that with regards to the example you gave, that's in the optional area. You, uh, if a person, in my view, agrees to have only one spouse, it's fine. If, if he wanted to agree to have more than one, I wouldn't see any objections to it either in some other society or in ours. So in that sense... But see, in our society, uh, we have made a judgment. That's true. And I don't agree with that judgment. I would say that um, it's just a tradition that's come from uh, well, historic I, times. And I don't think that there's anything inherently immoral in, say, like uh, certain people do in Utah, uh, have uh, by agreement. Not, not right. We're talking about all parties agreed that uh, they two women want to live with one man or two men with one woman. Uh, I don't see anything immoral with that as long as it's uh, by mutual consent. I think that's an area that's optional that you can decide. Uh, either person can decide well, see, or either society could decide. See, that's where your definition from the previous program, I think, gets you in a little bit of trouble. Uh -huh. And when you talked about in the previous program, uh, and I don't say this critically, I just say yeah. just as an observation. Uh -huh. In the last program you said that that which in fact, uh, um, uh, uh, that there are observable principles or observable results that determine whether or not you uh, um, are enhancing life. Right. Um, and uh, there are those who would argue, a number of uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, mm -hmm. uh, people who are, quote, experts uh, in what enhances life, they would argue that in a society as complex as ours, it is very, very counterproductive to the psyche of the children who are the offspring of those mm -hmm. marriages. Not if it were isolated all by itself and they didn't live within a society as a whole, it may not be a problem, but it creates great conflict in turn producing, I don't know this to be true, but arguably they could say that it produces a low self-esteem on the part of those children, not knowing for certain what their relationship was within this greater, this, this, this greater configuration of multiple wives and one husband. Uh -huh. It has conflicts within the law as to who in fact is entitled to inherit and not inherit. It does create dilemmas within society. Well, Therefore, it does not enhance life. It diminishes from life in the well, same way to a much lesser extent that, that uh, self-abuse through drugs or liquor or anything else does. Well, luckily, we have various societies that have uh, experimented with that uh, way of life, and none of these results have occurred.